What's up guys? So today I'm just going to be talking about everything I learned from the Dunk Camp Utah and Dunk Camp Wisconsin contests. Uh, I got fourth place in Utah and second place in Wisconsin and I just want to go over everything that I learned and what helped me so that you can prepare yourself for your own contests. So to start off I'm just going to talk about how to prepare yourself for the contest. You really want to be thinking about the scoring system and the format. So the scoring system, we have the WDA scoring system for the dunk cap contest, which is a, a numerical scoring system that takes complexity of dunks and uh, certain dunks will just do better than other dunks because of a number system. But if you just have judges like other contests do, it's more subjective. Judges will just score it how much they like it based on a scale one to 10. The scoring system and how contests work can vary a lot just between how many dunks you can do, how dunks are scored, and you really want to take that into account before going into the contest. So with that stuff in mind, you want to make a list of dunks to match the format of the dunk contest you're doing. So for me, I literally typed a notepad doc of the five dunks I was going to do, and then a couple of backup dunks in case I missed. So I had three attempts per dunk, and I wanted to make my list something that I knew I could do very consistently. Like my five dunks were all dunks that I knew I could hit very confidently. And I think that's super, super important if you're a competitor, just having that confidence of, yeah, I can kill this. And with that mindset on top of adrenaline and just the environment, you're gonna, you're gonna do great. All right, so the day of the contest. The contest itself, what do you do? You get your carbs, you get your caffeine, of course, and um, don't warm up too much. That was something I did wrong for Dunk Camp Utah. So what the Dunk Camp does is they give you the option to retest your vertical and then do the contest after. And that's what I did. I retested my vert. I thought that would be a good warm up, but I did like five or six max effort jumps and then went into the contest that did a lot more fatigue to my legs than i thought it would especially when it comes to waiting and staying warm which is another point i'll get to in a minute but my legs felt like rocks in the finals my final dunk i made it to the finals and my last dunk was a one-hander because my legs felt so heavy i couldn't like i could not stick to my plan at all just because of how dead my legs felt you really want to be careful about warming up too much like you should be starting to peak going into the first rounds in my opinion and staying warm you really 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 need to stay warm if you sit down in between dunks waiting for your competitors to go that's going to hurt you pretty bad and it's gonna you're gonna relax and your body's gonna kind of like cool off you really don't want that to happen so a strategy for that that i did is i just did like a 50 percent effort jump or like a standing jump every minute or so so it didn't take too much energy out of me but it kept my body like ready to go feeling bouncy if you will so definitely do that so the next part is what I'd consider adaptation. This is stuff you're going to learn mostly through experience, but I'm at least gonna talk about what I picked up and what I had to do. So you really wanna look at your com uh, your competition. So for example, in Dunk Camp Wisconsin, while we're going through round one, everyone was punching their dunks so hard. We we're pretty much on completely equal footing going into round two. So I had planned to do a harder dunk for that round two because I had two dunks for round two. I had a simple dunk and a harder dunk if everyone was doing really well. And everyone was doing great. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go in and do the harder dunk. But then in round two, people kind of started to miss. I think three out of the four people before me missed their second dunk. So I just need to make it to finals because of the format of the dunk contest. I knew I just had to make it to finals, so I did my simple dunk, and that ended up being a perfect choice because I was in first or second place going into the finals, and I made it by a long shot just doing the simpler dunk because I saw that my opponents weren't doing as well. And the other thing is 
court conditions and props. Dunk contest probably won't go perfectly. There's a lot of moving parts you might not think about, and I'm sure there's some I haven't experienced either. But for example, the judge's table was in the exact spot I like to do my Ziani's and Jayrich's for, which were my two dunks in the finals. So as soon as I finished my last dunk in round three of like the, uh, just the, the finals qualifiers, I guess, I asked the judges to move the table to the right so I could do that. And you just kind of have to be prepared for that. So sometimes unexpected stuff will happen, which I think is why preparing for the unexpected is so important because you just need to keep confidence even when things are variable. And that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. The best experience and learning you can get obviously is just by doing it yourself, but I hope this could at least give some people a new perspective or considerations for their own contests. I still have a long way to go. I've only done two contests, so. <laughs> Am I qualified to talk about this? A little bit and uh if you're hosting dunk contests dm me i will do them and i will try to win oh yeah i forgot to say this uh please subscribe